All right, so you made it to the case study. I'm so excited because what I have in store for you in the next 30 minutes is going to just blow your hair back, okay? Because what I did is I started from the very beginning of a deal and I went all the way through to selling it and collecting a check. I even show you the check, okay? So what I did is I had Emma follow me around when I needed her or I did selfie pictures on my cell phone, you know, selfie videos. Now, don't critique my filming, guys. This is not a Hollywood video. This is not some professional shot video. We, the only editing that we did was just to put all the short videos into one video that you're about to watch, which is about 30 minutes, like I said, okay? The intention of this video is nothing more than to get you to believe that you can do what I do several times a month. And once you understand this process I'm about to show you, it only lights up in your head and it makes you so you, you realize that you could do this because that's how I started. And you can do the same way. You have to start with one house and I'm gonna show you how to do it one house. So we're gonna start from the beginning, go all the way to the end and I show you the check, okay? So grab a cup of coffee, get in front of your computer or iPad or, or whatever you're gonna watch the video on and give me about 30 minutes and I'm gonna enlighten you on how this business works with live footage. They're, they're, they're small videos that we took in, 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 in separate parts of time so we documented everything and it's all waiting for you right now, ready to go. So watch the video and I'll catch up with you when we're all done, okay? Okay, so here's the first step. What I'd like to show you is the most powerful campaign we're using to find houses right now. And it's so simple. It's so, so simple. Okay? So what I want you to do is I want you to go online to my friend, Mr. Google, and your friend too, of course. And I want you to type in your city or your area or wherever you want to buy a house. Okay? And then right behind that, I want you to type in FISBO, F-S-B-O, or for sale by owner, okay? Because that's what I did. And I came up with, I have a list here of, of about, I think we have, I don't know, I think there's 12 names here, okay? So these are 12 houses that we found on a for sale by owner list, okay? And we're gonna actually call these people. The contact information, there's, there's, uh, there's info, you know, the, the house is on there, the description of the house is on there, uh, you know, obviously the address, and there's a phone number at the bottom that says to call them, okay? So what we're going to do, uh, not me, I'm actually going to have Emma because this is how we do it. Emma actually makes these phone calls. We actually have this script, okay? And it and it's a script that you you dial the phone number here, and you just read the script. And all the script is going to do is let us know if this person is going to let us do a terms deal. Now a terms deal means that they're going to allow us to pay them later. They're not looking for all their cash today and they're willing to let us make monthly payments. And we're going to go over that later. We're going to actually find somebody. I'm going to go out and do a presentation. Now I don't think I can film them doing the presentation because I, you know, I'm gonna, I want to do my job. I don't want to have to worry about filming it. Uh, but I'm going to get as close and as real as I can. So for right now, what we're going to do is we're going to... I have a list. I went and made a list myself. I went onto Google. I typed in my city and FISBO or for sale by owner. FISBO is short for for, for sale by owner if you haven't figured that out. And I got, I got about 12 properties that we're going to call. Now, why did I pick 12? Because I know Emma does a really good job with the script, okay? And usually one in about four or five calls she makes, we'll get an appointment. We'll get somebody that's interested and we'll get an appointment, okay? Now, if you're new, maybe that's seven or eight phone calls, but I've not seen it ever, ever more than eight or ten phone calls. So if you're making more than eight or ten phone calls to for sale by owners, then you're just not using the script, okay? So that's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna get these calls, I'm gonna get these, these leads over to Emma, and she's gonna call them using this script, and we're gonna see what happens, okay? 
So the next video, we'll talk about that. Okay, so at this point, what's happened is uh, Emma has made uh, the phone calls for the for sale by owners that I found online. Um, so, Em, there was like 10 or 12 leads, right? Yeah. So, uh, you called all, how many did you call? I called all 10 and I reached about seven. Seven, okay. And then we ended up with four people that I have to call. Yes. Right? So, uh, what I'm going to do at this point uh, is I'm actually going to call these people. So, uh, you have to understand that this all happened in like a couple of hours. So, I went online. I found the, uh, the, I typed into Google, you know, what, what city I found some for sale by owners. I gave them to Emma. She used our script right here and she called, uh, the 10 people and she talked to like six or seven, she's saying, and, um, we have, uh, I have like, I think there's three people I can call. There's four names here, but I think three of them are actually people that would consider selling their house. Uh, there's one that's a little bit iffy. Uh, so what I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to call those those people. Uh, I'm going to do that off camera because I don't want to have uh, you know interrupt my uh, my deal flow and uh, create a problem for somebody that's not on the phone because we're recording and stuff like that. So I'm going to call these names and as soon as I get them done in the next couple of minutes, I'm going to come back and do another video and let you know what happened. But most importantly, I want you to realize that this is I mean we've been doing this for maybe an hour, hour and a half, if that. Okay, it, it hasn't been very long at all. In fact, it, it took us more time to, to do all the filming and all that kind of stuff than it did to actually, uh, not, the, not the filming, but just talk about what we're doing more than it actually did to have us do the call. So this is a fairly quick process. So uh, let me make some phone calls and I'll report right back to you. Okay, so I've made so far three phone calls. The one I told you about was totally not, he was not even interested in selling. It was just... Uh, I think he misunderstood Emma, which happens uh, not quite a bit, but it does happen. It's totally okay because the best thing we could be doing is talking to motivated sellers. So the fact that, that Emma called them, which by the way, you don't have to have somebody doing this for you. This is something you could do. You could do two separate phone calls. I do it that way because it's uh, it's just better. Uh, there's a lot of reasons behind it, and we'll, we'll talk about that later. I, all this stuff I can show you later on all the little nitty gritty stuff. Right now I'm just showing you the process, okay? So what it came down to is I, I had my four leads. I've called three of them. I have a really good feeling about this last one. So I'm actually gonna make the phone call while I'm here. And if the conversation goes well, uh, we, might video, we might video some of it. I'm gonna instruct Emma what to do so that once we get into the call, uh, I have a little bit of concern that uh, there's some privacy issues there, so uh, we're going to figure out what to do there, uh, but we'll do that once we get on the call. I don't even know how the call's going to work out yet. Uh, I just have a gut feeling about it. I mean, I've looked at a lot of these, and I just think that this is really uh, going to be a good call. So if it's a good call, uh, Emma will be recording some parts of it, so you can hear uh, at least a section of it, so you know that I'm actually talking to somebody, uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so let me call this lead and let me see what happens and I'll report back. Okay, good. So I've explained to you how I would like to purchase your house. So you are willing to sell the house for what you owe on it. Is that correct? Okay, so if I come out there tomorrow, because Emma already made an appointment with you for tomorrow afternoon. So if I were to come out there tomorrow and uh, see the house and I like it, are you ready to do paperwork? Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll go over all the terms and I'll explain everything to you and I'll show you all the documents. And, you know, uh, once I, once we actually sign the documents, it takes a week or so for me to do title searches and stuff like that. So it's not going to happen real quick, but we're going to decide, you know, when, when you'll need to move and, you know, the rest of the stuff. Cause I know you started to move already. Is that correct? Uh, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so you already told me earlier you started the move and, and you got some stuff still in the house. So what we'll do is we'll figure out, you know, when you're going to finish moving stuff and we'll get all the details nailed down. So by the time I leave tomorrow afternoon, uh, we'll know exactly what we're going to do. Okay. 
and then uh, we'll have to go meet a notary public. So uh, just be prepared to do all that. So we'll, we'll probably be together about maybe 90 minutes or so, okay? Oh, you do have an order republic. Okay, good. Yeah, so if we can make arrangements to have them at the house, that would be awesome. Okay, good. So I'll see you at your house tomorrow around 2 o'clock, and we'll see what we can do to wrap things up. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. All right, bye-bye. Were you filming that? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. So uh, you snuck up on me, huh? So um, there we go. The, one of the leads that I had that Emma gave me uh, from yesterday, we actually uh, have a deal. It looks like we have a deal. I'm going to go out and look at the property tomorrow. Uh, I think uh, uh, I'm just going to take over her mortgage payments and she's going to deed me the house. Um, I don't really need any money. We didn't talk about deposit or anything like that. Uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow when I go out there. But uh, she agreed to sell me the house for what she owes on it. She already has another place to live and she was really motivated. So, uh, Em. <laughs> you did a really good job. You found me a motivated seller. And I'm going to go out and I think I'm going to buy a house. So that's exciting. What do you think? That's awesome. I it's, can't wait. It's very cool, huh? All right, good. That's what we call the closing call. That's where I, the deal maker, uh, and I'm called the deal maker because in my company that's what I do is I make the deals. Um, and I went over the details with her and talked to her about how it would work. She agreed to all of it. And uh, I'm going to go out and see her tomorrow, see if we can make a deal. So we'll see you tomorrow. So here we are in the car, uh, me smoking my cigar. That's what I do when I'm driving. I hope I don't offend you with my smoke. Emma's gotten used to it because she's with me all the time. Anyways, uh, we're running over to this appointment that we made uh, for 2 o'clock this afternoon. And uh, I just thought I would take you through the process of how I had to uh, get this house comfortable in my mind before I actually met this lady and figured out what I'm going to do. Now remember, I have seven different ways that I could buy property. So I have to be ready when I'm in the house to decide which process I'm going to use. And the only way I could do that is to be prepared in my own mind. So what I did is I went into Google and I typed the address of the property in Google. And I just did some research. You'll, you'll get all kinds of information there. Um, and it told, you know, I figured out how many square feet the house is, what the taxes are, you know, when, when the house last sold, how much she bought it for. You know, I could get all kinds of information that way. So I just kind of went and did some research and I got it in my mind that the house is worth around uh, 200,000. And I could, I could vary that whether I'm selling on terms or whether I'm paying cash, but at least I know what it is. So when I'm walking around the house, I can add and subtract and kind of figure out what I'm going on, what's going on. I don't go through the whole process of uh, going through realtors and all that until later. So for right now, uh, that's what I got. So we're gonna run over talk to this lady and as soon as I leave uh, the property I will let you know what happened I don't want to take the video camera or do anything while we're in the house because I don't want to blow my deal so uh, we're not going to do anything with the customer uh, we're just gonna uh, take a picture of the house uh, which when we get there we'll take a picture of the house so you can see the house uh, but I don't want to make too big of a deal about recording anything because like I said I don't want to blow it deal. okay so that's it we'll see you as soon as I get done see what happens Crush your fingers for me. Hopefully I can buy a house. I'm back. I'm lighting a cigar. We gotta wait till I get the cigar lit because I'm celebrating right now. I like to smoke. You know why I'm celebrating? <coughs> Choke on that smoke. <coughs> you know why I'm celebrating? Because I just bought a house. Where do you hear this? I go in and I ask the lady, to show me the house. So we go around the house. It's a three bedroom house, right? Shows me the uh, the bedrooms, the basement. She shows me everything and it's like, this house is totally pretty. All I have to do, I don't even think I have to sweep the floors. I think she's gonna clean the house enough so I don't even have to do nothing. Get all done, sat down at the table, whipped out my little folder, took all this paperwork and just started sliding it underneath her blue pen because I like it to be in blue pen. I explained each document to her. She signed it. Her friend, because she said she had a notary public that was a friend. Her friend showed up, notarized all the paperwork, and here we go. There's all the paperwork. So basically, she gave me the house for what she owes on it. So I'm going to keep moving on. We're in a parking lot down the street. We had to pull over. Show off the paperwork. 
Huh? You have to show, show off, off the, the paperwork. paperwork. Yeah. Can't do that while I'm driving. So she signed all the paperwork. <clears throat> she sold me the house for what she owes on it. She had most of her furniture out of the house because she's already found another place to live, some community that she wants to live in. All she wanted was relief on her payments. Her payments are $1,500 and 15 cents a month. She offered to pay the next two payments because I asked her that. So I have two months to go find a buyer for this house. And I have two months before I have to make the first mortgage payment. Technically, she gave me the deed. Not technically, she signed a deed to the house and gave me the house. The mortgage stays in her name. And I take over the mortgage payments. Now that sign, that sounds a little confusing to some folks, but you know, I have I have a way to show you how to do all this. There is a procedure. That's not the point of this video. I just want to show you what I did and show you that it's live and that it really does happen. So right now, what we're doing is we're going home to celebrate. Because I just bought a house. I like when I buy houses. My wife's gonna have to hear about it all night. I bought a house, I bought a house. <laughs> right? What do you think? Yeah, sounds good. The amazing thing about this house is it's totally beautiful and she'll be out next weekend. I will go back after she's moved out, make sure there's no holes in the walls and the refrigerators and stove and all that. There's nothing missing and our agreements are still in place. And at that point, she'll, uh, we'll shake hands and uh, I will go file the deed. So basically I got the house for what she owes on it. I'm going to have to go uh, to the town hall and file the deed when I'm ready. And uh, there's in Connecticut, there's a 1% uh, conveyance tax on uh, when you when you file a deed. So uh, normally I negotiate having her pay that, but uh, she gave me such a, a great deal. I agreed to pay $1,600, which is the conveyance tax, and I own the house. So I bought a three uh, 299 uh, yeah $199 house for $1,600. So it's not the $100 strategy I talk about. But this is much better because the deed is in my name and I actually own the house. I have no limits of when I have to pay it off. I think her mortgage, I got her mortgage statement. And I think her mortgage is due in like, I don't know, 20 something years. So I have that long to pay off the property. And uh, it was all because we did what we've showed you so far. And uh, it's actually that easy because we do this at least once a week, every other week, depending on my schedule and how many appointments I make. And that's it. So right now, we're gonna uh, we're gonna move on, right, Em? Yeah. All right. Here we go. Okay. Here's the deal. The uh, property that we looked at and signed the paperwork on the other day, <coughs> the girl called me, I'm choking on that damn smoke again, aren't I? The girl called me and said that uh, she moved out. Uh, I think it's been about five days. I'm not sure. I know it was definitely over the weekend. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So she called and said that she's uh, moved out and she's ready for us to do the inspection, which is actually good because uh, after I left the house the other day, uh, I called my attorney and actually had him do a title search. Um, now, I'm in Connecticut and it's a judicial state, which means that uh, we use attorneys to close real estate. Um, if you're in a state that uh, doesn't do that, then um, you would call your title company and they would do it for you. But the important part is I did a title search and what that does is it tells me whether or not there's any major problems with the house. I want to know what kind of liens are on there. You know, like in, in this case, there's just the uh, first lien. Uh, but what did happen was my attorney found out that when she originally bought the house, she bought it on a Chaffa mortgage which is a government mortgage that first time homeowners use. And um, there's a first and second position. So what happens is, is the first mortgage was to buy the house and then the second mortgage was for her down payment assistance. And uh, what happened was they, uh, a few years later, she actually refinanced the house. <clears throat> and uh, when they refinanced it, they paid off both mortgages at first one, sure, but they paid off first uh, the both mortgages. Uh, just to give an example, a second mortgage I think was like seven thousand or eight thousand. It was closing costs, uh, and that's the way Chaffa does that. The government does that. They do two, two liens. So uh, when they refinanced, what happened was the uh, 
they paid off the first mortgage and there was no evidence that they paid off the second mortgage. So I called her and she was able to help me figure out who to get a hold of and we gave them a call and uh, they were able to provide us a lien release. It cost uh, $80 to do it, which she paid for. Uh, and she's gonna give that to me uh, when I see her today. She's gonna give me the lien release for the second chapter mortgage. And then uh, once I get all that paperwork put together, we're gonna scoot over to the city hall and uh, we're actually gonna file the paperwork. Mm -hmm. sure. we're, gonna, we're gonna own the house by the time we get done, as long as everything goes smooth, okay? So that's what's going on. So there's been a little bit uh, since we last uh, last recorded, a little bit of things happening. I wanted to make sure that you were caught up with uh, how the deal is progressing. All right. So as soon as we uh, get in the house, we get done doing doing the inspection and uh, talking to her and getting the document that we're looking for. Uh, we'll fire the camera back up and let you know what happened. All right. So here we go and okay, here we are. We're inside the house and uh, my client just left. And I got the paperwork I was talking about, which was the lien release. And uh, I already had the rest of the paperwork so that I could actually uh, go to the town hall and do the filing. As you can see behind me, the kitchen is in pretty good shape. The appliances are here. Uh, I'll walk you around. My hand is in the way. Walk you around a little bit. Just give you an idea. This is the first floor. I told her she could leave this furniture. I'll probably sell that on Craigslist because she didn't want it. Uh, there's a couch in here. Um, it's it's a junk couch. I'll probably just get that out of here or just put it on Craigslist and tell somebody to come get it for free. This is the bathroom. You can see it here. I can't see it right now, so hopefully the camera's doing a good job. Here's a bedroom. I'm not going to walk through the whole house, but you can see that it's actually in pretty good shape. There's my hand again. I told you I'm a real estate guy. I'm not a camera guy. So, uh, Basically, the house is in good shape. I'm not going to do anything to it. I'm not even going to clean it uh, because she left it in really good shape. And uh, I'm going to go down to the town hall now and I'm going to actually uh, record the deed and uh, get, get everything so it's in my name um, and we'll own the house. So what we're going to do uh, is after we, what we're going to do next is after we do that, we're going to start selling it. So we'll talk about that in the next video. Or actually, we're going to, go to town hall. I'll shoot a video at the town hall, and then uh, once we get the the house set up, I'll go through uh, some of the things we're going to do to get it sold. Okay, so uh, pretty cool house, huh? It's a nice kitchen, anyways. Uh, I won't, and you know, the colors on the wall or nothing. I'm not going to do any of that. The new owner can paint it. It's not a problem with me. Okay, so there you go. So it occurred to me when I just walked outside that maybe you might want to see the front of the house because I haven't showed you that. But there's the house right there. There's a big tree in the way right now. Let me walk over here. But that's what the house looks like on the outside. It's a little cape. It's pretty common for the neighborhood. Um, and I, I buy. I bought a lot of houses in this neighborhood. It's a great neighborhood for me. And as you can see, it uh, doesn't need much work. It's uh, you know fall time around here, so. Uh, I'm not going to rake the leaves or nothing. I'm just going to sell it the way it is. All right, so now I'm going to go to town hall. I just left the town hall and I was able to file my deed. I was here probably, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. What I did first is I actually filed the lien release from the Chaffer mortgage so that it's in the right order on the title. And then I actually filed my title. Um, like I said, I was only here about 10 minutes and it was a piece of cake. The other thing I had to do is I had to fill out what we call a conveyance tax form. And that form actually is filed with the government. So they know I own the property. I paid the $1,600 that I was talking about. And we own the house. So from this point forward, I can do what I want. So now I'm going to start selling the house. I'm going to start getting buyers to look at it and uh, see if I can find me a rent to own buyer and move on. And it's gonna be exciting, so stay tuned. All right, so one of the things that we do when we sell houses is I stir up a whole bunch of curiosity in the neighborhood and I actually put signs, you can see a sign right there. And I put signs in the neighborhood and it points to the house. I'm gonna turn down the street here as we're going to the house. And you can see that every so many blocks, I put a sign out and I point people to the house so that they can go look at the house and know where the house is. And if you see right over here, 
right over here you can see another sign there and we just keep putting them on street corners until we get people to the house and that's one of the ways we get a lot of leads okay so I just showed you that I put signs out I went out I made uh, handwritten signs and I went out and put them around the neighborhood I've been doing this about 12 years like I said I've done a bunch of houses uh, for a very long time that was the main source of getting leads but nowadays we have the internet so what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate some ads online and I'm going to get people to go to the house. Now here's the amazing thing is, is we've automated that system. We're probably going to get, you know, between 70 and 100 phone calls. Uh, we're going to get probably between 20 and 30 people through the house. And then uh, that'll dwindle down to, you know, four, five, six, eight applications. We're going to sell the house on a rent to own or a lease option. And when I find the right buyer, they're going to give me a deposit and they're going to pay me monthly. So, so the way it works is I have money, money now, money monthly, and money later. And that means money now is the deposit. Money monthly is the difference between what I have to pay for the mortgage and what I'm charging for the rent. And money later is when they actually get a mortgage, they pay me, and then I pay off my underlying mortgage. Okay? So for right now, let's just uh, get some ads out there, get things going, and I'll report back to you as soon as I find out what's going on and as soon as I start getting some calls in there. And as soon as I, you know, I'll report to you what's going on. All right? Good. So as soon as I have that information, I'll be back to you. Okay. So uh, we've been advertising the house now for like a little over two weeks. I think it's two weeks and three days, two and a half weeks, something like that. And uh, we've got a lot of action. I'm going to show you that now. Um, I actually showed you that we put signs out. I showed you how we put the signs out uh, around the neighborhood and uh, that it was all automated and that uh, we're keeping track of it now, like how many people actually called. Uh, we have a, a web page that we actually put pictures online and show people in verbiage and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I'm willing to share all that with you later on, just not today. Uh, just if you decide you want that, we'll, we'll figure that out, how I can show that to you later. Um, but at this particular point, you can see that just the phone calls alone, I generated well over 75 calls. I think it's 77 calls. Uh, I generated where people actually called a free recorded message and they heard me explaining what the house is, that it's three bedrooms, it's one bathroom, the address, all that kind of stuff, and that they should go to the house and look at it, that they can get in the house. Okay, so this report, I'm going to switch tabs here. This report tells me that we've had, I think, like 26 or 27 people in the house. Okay. Uh, and from that result, I think we have two or three applications where people went in, they filled out the, the paperwork I left for them, and they sent me their applications and how much deposit money they have and a little bit of credit history so that I could actually call them, find out what their situation is, and if it's something that I think is doable or I think that they would be perfect for the house, then I'm going to make an appointment with them. And we're going to go through the process. Uh, we're going to sign, you know, we're going to uh, get some deposits from them, and then decide in another week or so uh, who's going to get in the house. And I'm going to collect my money, and they're going to move in. So for right now, I think we're doing really good. We've we've generated a lot of a lot of leads. We've got a lot of activity on the house. We've gotten a few applications, and I really think that it's going to be not very long. Hopefully within a week, I'll have this thing sold. I'll have my money in my pocket. And they'll be paying me rent every month with positive cash flow. And then we're going to help them get approved for a mortgage over the next several months or two years or, you know, a year, whatever it takes them to fix their credit. They're going to go get a mortgage. They're going to pay me. I'm going to pay my seller and I'm going to keep the difference. And that'll be the third one. Remember, cash now, uh, money, money now, money monthly, money later. So right now the money, the money now is going to be the deposit I collect. The money monthly is going to be the difference between what I have to pay for the mortgage and what I have to pay, or what I collect from my buyer, and then money later is going to be um, when I cash out. Okay, so uh, I'm going to make a few phone calls right now with a couple applications I have, and I'm going to report back to you, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I just made, uh, I think I had four applications. Uh, one of them wasn't really an application. It was, uh, wasn't, it was just somebody that didn't understand or something like that. Uh, so I actually had three prospects that I spoke to uh, since the last video, which is just a few minutes, like, I don't know, a little while ago, half an hour ago. Um, and I called the three that I had already, 
And um, to be honest with you, I, I wasn't crazy about them because realize that uh, I'm going to put somebody in this house for two years and I'm going to I'm going to have to live with them because they're going to be renting for me. Now, when I say rent, it's actually a lease with an option. So that means that they're actually buying the house. I'm not fixing toilets. I'm not, you know, I'm not doing repairs. I'm not cutting the grass. I'm not plowing the driveway uh, because they're buying it with an option to, uh, because they're renting it with an option to buy. They own the house. I become the bank. So I'm not doing any of that landlord stuff. And by the way, if they don't stay because they use the money for, uh, for the option to purchase, if they decide to leave, that money is non-refundable and they know that. Okay, so if they gave me $10,000 for down payment and a year from now they left, they don't get their money back. And they know that before they go in, they sign documents saying that, it's completely way up front and they know that. If they decide that they're going to buy, then they, I subtract the $10,000 from their purchase and sales contract when we go to sell it to them, and we do it that way. Okay, so i talked to three people. I'm going to wait a couple more days, get some more applications, and see if there's somebody that I like better. If not, then I'll come back to one of these three and see if I can get one of them to actually close with me and um, you know do the deal. Okay, so I'm going to wait a few more days, get some more marketing out there, uh, I'm going to blast another Facebook ad to get a little bit more action to it and uh, just kind of generate a little bit uh, more energy and a little bit more outflow and uh, see if I can come up with it uh, with the right guy. Okay, so I, I'm willing to wait. So uh, one of these three leads um, could could maybe be close, but I'd rather wait for the right one. Um, so you'll have to make those decisions when it's time for you to do it. The point that I want to make is is that most of this done is done from my desk. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not running all over chasing people and showing the house and all that kind of stuff. It is really that easy. Okay, so as soon as I get the right person, I'll uh, shoot another video and I'll let you know what's going on. Okay? Okay, so I regret shooting this video because I don't have a cigar because I, like I like to celebrate when I do these things. But I sold the house. Uh, I had a few more applications come in. I think another two applications come in. Um, and I called those people up. And uh, it's about uh, four or five days after the last time I shot the other video. And I actually found the perfect buyer for the house. And I say that because she told me she grew up in the neighborhood. Matter of fact, she told me of a, a story where she was driving her scooter when she was a kid. And she crashed it right in front of her house. And she was just laughing when she was telling me the story. Uh, they know people in the neighborhood. They're really excited about the house. They're a young couple getting started. They gave me a check for $10,000. I did a little bit of paperwork with them. Uh, we did a, a lease with an option to purchase, and they're moving in this weekend. And it's just that easy. See, when you buy the way I'm talking about, you're the bank. So I made the decision. Which, by the way, very often what I do is I'll take multiple deposits. I didn't have to do that in this house, but often I'll take multiple deposits. And I have paperwork that allows me to do that, which is unheard of. It costs me thousands of dollars to make this form. And it's so legal, it's unbelievable. I didn't even need to do that in this house. I, I was able to get, uh, I think we generated over 80 phone calls. I think we got about 30 people in the house. And I found the right person. We got about five or six applications. I, I made a few phone calls. I sat down with one person, which is unusual. Sometimes I sit down with two or three. But I sat down with one person. I found the right person in the house. We sat with them for about an hour. 45 minutes to an hour. I explained how everything worked. They, I went in the other room. They talked about it. I came back in and they were ready to write the check. So they gave me $10,000 down. I'm going to take out the $1,600 that I used to file the deed and I'm $8,400 ahead. I'm going to take some of that money and I'm going to put it in escrow. Or I'm going to put it into an account. So if they don't pay their mortgage or if there's damage, I have some money and the rest of it I'm going to take and I'm going to go do whatever I want with it. I'm going to spend it however I want. I haven't decided that part yet. So uh, you could do the same thing. It's not very difficult. I've taken you through the process. And I, ironically enough, it's not much harder than what I'm telling you. Uh, you know, you just gotta, you just gotta do it. You gotta, uh, just get in action, get on the phone. We started out with FISBO, you know, calling for sale by owner. We, we talked to them on the phone. We made some appointments. We went out and talked to some people. We made a deal and we filed the deed. It was not that hard. It really isn't that hard. Ironically enough, this is what we what I call a getting the deed deal. 
it's a little bit more difficult. So uh, I, I, I think it's a little bit more difficult than like a, a lease option or one of the other deals that I talk about. Uh, but this is my kind of deal. I love these kind of deals. So if you're not uh, ready to have the risk you can or don't have the $1,600, there are other ways. I could have bought this house for $100, uh, but I chose not to do it because I, I like the house and I want the house. I, I want to keep it. I mean, I have no, you know, no constraints of when I have to sell this house by. Uh, the mortgage has got to be paid off in like 23 years or something like that. So as long as I keep making payments, I own the house. Um, so I got $10,000 down and I got $300 a month positive cash flow. And when they decide that they're going to buy, there's uh, like $25,000 worth of profit once they get a mortgage and everybody's happy. Best part is I set it and I forget it. I just collect a check every month. If they don't pay me, I give it to my attorney. It costs me $1,200, $1,500. He does an eviction. They're gone. Okay. And, and I got to tell you, over the 12 years, I've only done that once. So I, I find it very easy to do business this way. You can see how, how easy the process could be. And you don't have to put a lot of significance on stuff. You don't have to get all confusing and complicated about it. It really is this easy. We do this a few times a month. And you could do the same. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And we'll talk soon.